Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Matrixes. Today again with Jonathan and Nikki. Yes, we have made many, many videos, almost 200 pieces or maybe even more, more. And our main topic is getting out of the matrix. And we actually made a video about that at the very beginning or some about the arrows of light and how to leave the matrix. What is crucial is, of course, the reincarnation cycle in relation to the topic of the matrix. And we've never really talked much about it except in our online seminars. But I think we should do it again sometime. And that's why today we're talking about the reincarnation cycle, what types of reincarnations there are, and of course some of our personal reincarnation memories. What do you think? Good plan. That's how we do it today. Today's topic is reincarnation and memory. What is reincarnation? What's all this about? And of course a few memories from us too. So we remember quite a few lives through our techniques, I would say. And that's all we're talking about today, right? Reincarnation is just a foreign word. It is also called palingenesis. You can say that. You don't have to. Just he and his foreign words know that. In German, it means something like reincarnation or becoming flesh again. Reincarnation, Karna Karni is in there. I don't know. I don't think I like it that much. Why not? We'll stick with reincarnation without analysis. Or rebirth, they also say. And of course, this is an exciting topic because many people have heard of reincarnation and think to themselves, if this was all true, then why don't I remember it? Why don't I remember that in my last life I was perhaps a farrier in the Middle Ages? And the interesting thing is, when you ask other people, do you remember another life, they often say, yes, I was Cleopatra, or I was the king of France, or I was Isis from Egypt. No, that was me. <laughs> and if someone answers like that, you can assume with a probability of 99.999999% that it's nonsense. Because if you ask someone, tell me, do you remember another life? And the person then says, yes, I used to be a farmer in the field and worked and went crazy all day long. Who said that? Then it sounds more authentic because we've already talked to a lot of people and some of them always claim that they were really great in the past and that they're currently a housewife with, I don't know, three children or something like that and then there has to be a little compensation of course many of you have not only lived this one life so far but very very many it's a cycle in which you immerse yourself in a life again and again playing it through sometimes even several times We've already had over 50 or 60 lives behind us. I think we mentioned in a video somewhere how many we had. So we've been here on this planet Earth for almost 5,000 years and we've reincarnated into this cycle again and again. And very, very, very many of you do that. In some cases up to thousands of lives. It also happens very often. And yeah, it's just fun to play in the matrix and play that cycle over and over and over again. And above all, if you really liked one life or another, you may either want to live the same life again or a very similar one in another time and place. In any case, we often have a lot of fun playing the games here, I would say. And that's why we often play the same thing.
Yes, what is the reincarnation cycle? The reincarnation cycle is, as it is said in Buddhism, the eternal wheel of rebirth. And the Buddhists also know or have always known that humans reincarnate again and again because the matrix somehow makes people addicted. Maybe you have a great game on your phone or computer that you've played a hundred times. You can imagine how this can work. Then you have lived a great life and die and then come to the afterlife and think that was great. I want to play that again somehow. This time I'm not a woman, but a man. Or this time I want to do it better. Yeah, or last time I was a bad guy hunting witches, and this time I'm going to be a good guy. <laughs> or play the witch. Let's see what the perspective is. So this is the reincarnation cycle, yes. And with the reincarnation cycle, you usually plan your life from the astral plane. And then you plan everything. Which country do I want to live in? Which city do I want to live in? Who are my parents? Then they show you, I don't know, 10, 20 sets of parents. You can then observe these parents a little bit and see what they do in life. what they think is great and what they don't think is so great. And then you can choose from these parents what suits you best. And in the reincarnation cycle, however, you then sign a contract on the plane, on the afterlife plane, or one might say, on the astral plane. And this contract says, yes, you have to reincarnate again and again until your mission or goal has been achieved. And only then will you have completed the cycle and will not need to go back into the matrix. Yes, but there's a trick there too that they keep luring you in. Even after you've already finished it, the matrix is so tempting that you think, come on, there's one more thing to do. Speaking really slow and sleepy, he said, yes, of course. It's always seductive. Imagine you die and then go over to the afterlife and think to yourself, no, now I'll keep out of the way of the whole cycle of reincarnation, the constant hustle and bustle of dying and being. reborn and then somehow your partner will be standing in the light says hello darling come over I'm already here and you think oh no yes well then I'll go there again and boom you're back in the cycle are you sure I think he thinks oh darling yes you're right come on yes sure I mean yes hello Who do I talk to? Yes, hello, this is the Reincarnation Planning Center. Oh, hello, can I do that badly? Yes, Nikki, we have an excellent life for you here in a wonderful family, rich with your own property. You have a very smooth and elegant life and you are very rich, a manager, earning about a million a year. What about that? Entry would be possible soon. Oh, that wasn't my last life. Okay, yes. Okay, yes. Doesn't actually sound that far. Can I think about it for a moment? Speaking really slow and sleepy, he said, yes, of course. No, thanks. Actually, I would much rather have a challenge. What kind of parents do I have? Yes, the parents are very loving and love their child. You are an only child, have no competition in terms of children or siblings, and you are also the firstborn and therefore have many options. Oh, 
wow, that sounds really nice, but wouldn't I actually rather have a mother like that who constantly complains to me and an alcoholic father? That would be more exciting somehow. Would it be possible? Yes, that would be possible. Yes, cool. And yes, I know a million a year sounds really crazy and all that and being a manager, but could we shoot something there? Yes, what would you like there? Actually, I would like to live at the limit, no money, so always broke, bad jobs. Would that be possible somehow? Can you somehow turn it around like that? Yes, that would be possible. That would, of course, be a special challenge. And this stupid, boring, boring life, I don't know, with this fancy Mickey house somehow. No idea. Big city, small, cheap apartment. Couldn't that be a little more exciting and challenging? Yes, of course, that would also be possible. That all sounds much cooler. I think we should do that, right? Yes, if you would like to take on this challenge. Challenge accepted. Yes, in just five minutes we could have a life in Botswana. What? Yes, now let's talk about the types of reincarnations. Yes, the classic version. Yes, there is the classic reincarnation. Then, of course, reincarnation in the matrix, simultaneous incarnations, collective incarnations. Of course, there are also uh, redundant incarnations. Yes, and then, of course, there are holistic reincarnations. Yes, you know, classic reincarnation from Buddhism. But that's the lesson for beginners, I would say, so that you can get an idea of what reincarnation means. This means that you will die at some point in your current life and be reborn as a baby in the next life. Yes, that is very classic. This is the classic reincarnation theory, which comes mainly from the Buddhist area. And Buddhism is widespread worldwide, even more widespread than some of the well-known religions from Western civilization. As an example, Japan does not have religion as a school subject, but rather Buddhism. And there are many other countries that don't have religion as a school subject for children, but rather Buddhism. They just teach Buddhism. And that's why belief in reincarnation is quite widespread. And it is taught in this classic way, but as I mentioned at the beginning, this is just the classic way to get started. But reincarnation is much, much bigger and a much bigger topic than you might know from all the other videos that are on YouTube. That means we can go through the types of reincarnation that Nikki just listed very briefly so that you can get an idea. Yes, reincarnation in the matrix, you will be captured is actually the wrong word, but seduced to enter the matrix in order to incarnate here. Of course, they do this very cleverly, more or less through huge billboards. We've already made a video about it. Advertising in the matrix is what I think it's called. We'll also show it below. In any case, you come along as a happy, curious soul, think, oh, what a beautiful big blue planet this is, and then you're told how beautiful it is on this planet Earth. You can feel, you can touch, you can experience everything, and so you actually agree almost immediately, yes, I'll do that. Because as a soul, you are millions, billions of years old, and you think, hey, come on, that's a... thousand given a hundred thousand years and thus enter the matrix and play again and again life after life after life after life after life after life and at some point you think to yourself shit there were enough lives 
But yes, then there is simultaneous reincarnation. Yes, and as soon as you have incarnated into the matrix as a soul, that can be either as a baby, but you can also come into this body as an adult. It is not fixed. Normally, classically means you go into a baby as a soul and live through life. However, that's not how it is. When reincarnating in the matrix, you can enter this body at any age, get memories. They don't have to be yours. Because if, for example, you only come into this body at the age of 15, it may be that there was already a soul in it that had its experience, and you then take that with you. But it could also be that there was no soul in it. This means that you climb into a body that was, so to speak, empty, only had an ego in it, so to speak, actually an extra. And yes, you'll get your first memories. You could also call them fake memories. It's a matter of interpretation. Anyway, you then get memories from the last 15 years, and of course you think they are your own. So you get memories downloaded. Yes, of course, if, for example, you reincarnate at the age of, let's say, 15, as Nikki says, then you can't have been enrolled in primary school, for example, because you only started school at the age of 15. Year of age entered, that is, those memories that you have from the first to the 15th, years of age missing, must be there. Otherwise, the person in the matrix or the person in the matrix will wonder, why don't I have any memories of the first 15 years? So these memories have to be recorded. This is then organized by the matrix AI. As soon as you enter the matrix and you are already 15 years old and not a baby, then it will be implemented immediately. School parents, first tricycle, first go kart and school cone and all that stuff. Maybe as a small comparison, you may know that when you are dreaming and suddenly you are in a completely different reality than the one you live in now, and you are a little bit lucid, I pre, pre, pre lucid, then you are surprised. First of all, it's strange. Somehow everything is different here. But suddenly you realize, oh yes, that's right, I moved last week. And at that moment, all the memories of the alternative reality were removed. This is how you can imagine it with the upload, when you as a soul go into a 15-year-old body. Yes, and you can clean your body even in your 20th life or in the 50th. So anything is possible because your memories will always be recorded. And you can't tell the difference either. You can rummage around in your head for as long as you like. You can't really tell them apart, so it's very, very difficult. That's why we have our ego. It's like rose-colored glasses. It puts a filter over this transition from soul to body, and therefore it doesn't notice anything. Simultaneous reincarnation. This modern reincarnation simply means the simultaneous incarnation. This means that the doctrine of reincarnation goes one level further and it is not the case, let's say, in the 15th century. You're reborn in the 17th century and you die and then you're born in the 17th century. Century, you are reborn again and die and in the next century, 18. Or perhaps in the century after next, in the 19th century, you are reborn and eventually die and so on and so forth. That's how you imagine it, like a timeline. You could say, here I was in the Middle Ages, there I was in the Renaissance and here I am now in the present according to the motto. That's not how it is. Lives don't happen one after the other. Like, for example, we get our driver's license and only then buy the car and only then drive around in it. 
This is the causal principle, and it means that one moment follows the other and builds on each other. When looking at simultaneous incarnation or reincarnation, it is not the same, but rather one assumes that from a higher perspective, outside the matrix, from the astral planes, the time stream does not actually exist. The start and end times can certainly be the same. Sounds a bit complicated, but imagine that you are the all-encompassing higher self and you plan to incarnate in the matrix. So you can plan all your lives from the astral plane, so to speak, from the outset. This means that the higher self releases a part of itself into several epochs of time. And here says ego number one, you are living life in the Middle Ages. Ego number two, you are doing life in the Renaissance. Ego number three, you do life in the 21st century. Century. Ego number four, you are doing life in the 23rd century. And then the higher self snaps its fingers and all egos incarnate in their time period. This means that all lives are happening at the same time at this moment. The impression that lives run one after the other is based on the fact that we have been trained to think one after the other in our way of thinking. Organizing time began in history class. That is past. The Middle Ages are a thing of the past. Renaissance is a thing of the past. And flying spaceships is the future of fiction. That's what we were taught in school. And of course, this supports the way of thinking that reincarnations have to happen one after the other. Yes, that's why it's actually called reincarnation. The word itself doesn't actually make sense. Because from the perspective of the higher and more timeless self, it is actually a multi-incarnation, a simultaneous multi-incarnation. And this brings us much closer to the truth about reincarnation. For example, people also ask themselves the question, like all lives are at the same time, what should that look like? If you, e.g., if you're on the phone with a friend from the USA, you are not at exactly the same time or time of day. If you, e.g., Nikki is driving around in the USA and I'm in Germany and I call her, how are you? I'm just sitting at breakfast when Nikki probably says to me, you're eating dinner now. How can that be? That's just the time difference. But even though she is eating dinner and I am having breakfast, we can talk on the phone in the present. That means there is a time difference, but we still exist at the same time and can even talk to each other on the phone. Even though dinner and breakfast are separated in time, this is roughly how you can imagine simultaneity or imagine you have multiple games on your phone. One is set in the Middle Ages, one is set in the present, and one is set in the future with spaceships. All three games exist at the same time. All you have to do is tap on it and get started. And this is how you can imagine simultaneity. The only problem with this is, of course, if you tap on one of the games and activate the game and play the game, you, of course, have to play through the game in a timed sequence until it is finished. Yes, then there is collective incarnation. That means, yes, that you actually played every life, every person. That means you're not just a lady from the 18th century. Century or the woman who left her spaceship in the 23rd century. Century flies, but you have been every woman. 
every woman who has ever existed exists and will exist. That means you've played them all. I think it's called the egg theory or something like that. There is something like that there. I don't remember exactly, but I think you know better. Yes, yes, that's the egg theory. That's just the theory that says in order to complete your training as a creator god, you have to go through all the lives that exist on planet Earth. So in truth, we all are, from a very high perspective, we are every person, every being, everything that has ever existed. That is, of course, true. So in reality, purely theoretically, you have every life of every woman that has ever existed or is actually played. The men too, the men too, of course, as I said, but from a very, very high perspective, this is actually true. Yes, you can imagine it like this, for example. A sun with its countless particles from which it orders. The gravitational particles and solar particles and what other particles, I don't know. And when it eventually implodes and becomes a black hole, only one particle remains. But with the power of the entire sun. So it is then a super particle. Seen like that, yes. And this super particle could perhaps be compared with the creator god to whom all earthlings will ultimately return. The egg theory is not correct from our perspective. Not from our perspective. But I personally find it very interesting because then everyone thinks three times about how they should deal with their fellow human beings. Because at some point he is him. So that's what I find really exciting about it. So actually he is more like him now, but from the perspective of the ego, he is, of course, not more like him now. But when he looks from a higher perspective, he is more like him. Yes, or maybe in the next life he will be more like him. Anyway, anyway, you are you and the other person is you too. Yes, that means that if you spank someone because they annoyed you, in the next life you might be the one who suddenly gets spanked by the guy you were before. Confusing, but because that's who you are now, the redundant incarnation. I'd say we're done with the topic. Everything is redundant, we can go home. No, redundant incarnation actually refers to the respective life. That means you've already lived this life, either from baby to grandpa or whenever you got in and thought to yourself, that was nice. Let's do it again. Or was this life played so poorly? I have to do better. And you decide to play this life again. So you play this life over and over again until you are happy with how you played this life. In that sense, it is redundant, semi-redundant. It depends on your personal observation and interpretation and evaluation of how you felt about having played or lived life. So yes, that's roughly the redundant incarnation. You play something over and over again like a fool. Yes, that concerns current life. That means Nikki thinks in the next life, yes, that's when I met this crazy guy, Jonathan. What? Yes. I would also be interested to know what would have happened if I hadn't met Jonathan. No, I'm not interested. Go on, as an example, stupid example. Okay. Or you might think like this, what would have happened if I hadn't gotten married back then, or if I hadn't had a child back then, or if I hadn't taken this job back then, but the other job? How would my life have been then? And these questions, especially if you perhaps regret some decision in your past, are likely to cause you to resort to the redundant incarnation. that you think I'll go back into life and see what this other variation would have looked like, what I would have experienced, what would have been different, and, and, and... 
and you can easily play it through a hundred times. Yes, it is also fine. Or what do you think? Many times. You can play through this hundreds of times. We know because we've already been told that we've done that from time to time. Why actually? Anyway. So most people often reincarnate because they think they didn't do a good job in life or they hurt too many people or they weren't nice enough or they weren't angelic enough or something else. A well-known reason why people ultimately say, yes, I'll do this life again. Or there are also people who think, I was in a really bad mood in this life. I just fooled all the other people. In the next life, I have to take on the other opposite role in which I'm constantly being taken for a ride. They also exist in sections. This means you don't replay your entire life. Because in reality, we will also make another video about this. Our lives are not structured linearly, but rather in sections. And sometimes you think, this section, I did it really stupidly. I play it again and again until I play it in a way that I'm happy with. Yes, a lot of people do that. For example, even if you have died and then you come to the light and then there is a matrix guardian disguised as Peter, of course, maybe, or as a beautiful angel with... big fluttering wings and he says to you, yes, you have completed this life, but think about it again. Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you happy with the life you have led? You can do much better, says your angels or Peter or someone else to you. And then you think, yes. Isn't Peter the one with the weather and the rain? That was Pam. The nature God. Peter was one of Jesus' disciples. And they say that he stands in the gates of heaven and checks whether people are allowed in or not. The bouncer, so to speak. Good, now you all know the bouncer. Understood. Yes, and that can happen. What could that possibly be is actually nonsense. So normally it happens like this very often. Very often. Or you stand there. Well, another story. <laughs> then the holistic reincarnation. Jonathan? Yes, holistic reincarnation is from your perspective that you... You could say so casually that you spontaneously decide what kind of reincarnation you want to do. This means that you die and then come back to the corresponding astral plane where the planning level also exists on which you then plan your next life. And then you actually decide quite spontaneously. That means, yes, am I now incarnating again in the Middle Ages or am I now incarnating in the 23rd century? century or do I just live the life I've already lived again or do I just move on to the 25th century? One year of my life and start there so I can save myself the school time and all that nonsense. This is actually a holistic incarnation. This means that you simply decide spontaneously how you will plan your next life. But you shouldn't get confused now, because all lives are actually simultaneous and have been planned for a long time. So all of these considerations have actually already been there. Only, of course, you play through this when you get to the astral plane. This means that you play through something that has already been played before, including choosing your next life. And the first one to go through all the incarnations was your higher self anyway. You are just the one who walks the path again and again and again.
we now have to somehow underline this with such an echo again again. We'll do it like this. Yes, these are the types of reincarnation that exist. So from a personal point of view, I would say that we spontaneously use holistic incarnation or simultaneous incarnation anyway. That's what we believe, that all lives happen at the same time, and we only play through one life at a time, even though they are already running. How can you imagine that? Take a TV? Or something like that, yes. Imagine a television and you turn on program one and you watch the main character as he, let's say, runs through the forest with his dog on the way to Kentucky's. Then you switch on program two and see someone riding a horse through the desert. Yes, but the difference is that when you switch from program one to program two, the man with his dog running to Kentucky is paused. At that moment, he stops running, so to speak. He is paused. And then you go to the second program. What did you say? What happens there? A man rides through the desert. All right. Cowboy. Cowboy rides through the prairie or desert. Yes, yes, yes. And if you then switch back from program two to program one, the man continues to run with his dog through the forest towards Kentucky. And the rider sits there like this. Exactly. You can roughly imagine how the higher self jumps back and forth between lives or how you also jump back and forth between lives every day. You just don't get it because your ego is programmed to only focus on and live through this life now in 2024. You don't even notice the other lives. Everything is beautifully smooched. Exactly. It's a nice smooch. You don't even notice it. So if you find yourself staring at the wall somewhere and thinking about something lost in your thoughts, it could well be that you are riding through the desert. You can't even get it. And then you come back and someone says to you, hey, you have to roll the dice. We're playing munch. Don't be upset. And then you say, I was just thinking. In what thoughts? In what thoughts? Maybe you were just in the desert on a horse. And sent your focus point. <laughs> yes, that's pretty much how you can imagine it. In any case, we assume that all lives occur at the same time. They are all stored on the hard drive. And of course, when you start any of these lives, you have to play through the life from beginning to end. And when you finish it, you get out again and start the next game. Actually, the principle of reincarnation is actually quite similar to how we use cell phones. Yes, actually very good to compare with the computer. It's a computer game anyway. Here you go to Facebook and see what's going on there. So you go to Instagram and see what's going on. Then you play a game as a farmer and plant some types of grain or apples or pears or something like that. That's pretty much how you can imagine it. And while you're sitting on your phone and then typing away on your phone, you could say you're the higher self choosing which game, I would say. We've already lived a few lives. Maybe we'll share one or two memories that we've experienced. And of course, we also have one in common. So we have experienced many lives together practically at the same time. Yes, we kept going back to each other. So actually in every life, but not always like this. But anyway, tell me one of the memories you had there. Oh, you were in India too, I just saw. How nice. Yes, so the problem with the memories of other lives is that the ego has no access within the life it is currently living. Not really, no. 
Now, if you're wondering, yes, my God, if reincarnation exists, why don't I remember all this stuff from the last life? I would like to remember, yes. But here in the Matrix, it was designed so that you shouldn't remember. This is what we call collective amnesia. Yes, that is, as a rule, every person, yes, should not be able to remember their previous lives. The Matrix architects set it up that way. And the problem with that, of course, is that reincarnation then becomes quite difficult to prove if you don't remember it. Yes, what kind of past lives we ourselves have experienced in quotation marks. Yes, so definitely we both have a life where we met and we have identical memories of that other life. And we have even met some people who were part of this past life. Some people, probably five or six, and remember the same thing. Yeah, right. That's the exciting thing about it. I don't know. There are now five or six people who remember identical scenes from this past life in which Nikki and I also lived together in a very large mansion with... One huge garden and, yes, Schneik. It was really nice in England near London and that's just where we lived. And at that time, I was, yes, a traveling salesman, you could say. I would say a merchant, a tradesman who often went to sea. I still remember standing on the banks and saying goodbye to him. Exactly. Well, darling, see you in four weeks. Ciao. Crap. According to the motto? Yes, and I was at home looking after the children in our manor house, but I also had a governess aunt who, of course, also looked after the children. We also had some, what do you call it, butler servants who also helped out with the garden, the house, the children, you name it. Yes, but it was really an exciting life for me. So not only were we very wealthy there, which wasn't necessarily the point with a lot of staff and stuff like that, but we were also very interested in the E, Occult. And do you remember the masked balls? Yes, they were always very nice, always a lot of fun. Most of the balls, they were always great. Or the short trips to London or to the balls, that was always great. Yes, I also have scenes with the carriage and the paving stones and everything. Yes, right, right. And it was definitely a nice time. You were always beautifully dressed. You always looked very good, always wore nice clothes and so on. And for every occasion, we almost changed clothes. So that was always very funny, very interesting. And it really was a good life. And the exciting thing about it is that we really have identical memories. Without us agreeing beforehand, it just happened one after the other. And yes, as you say, occultism was also a big topic there. Yes, we were very interested in that. Occultism later became the branch of parapsychology, researching paranormalities and so on. And yes, at the turn of the century when we had this life, occultism was very popular. There was some medium in every corner who said they could talk to spirits and the dead or people who somehow said they could create ectoplasm, that is, bring a substance from the afterlife into physical reality and all that. Sort of thing. And I think Houdini was still running around with his magic tricks at the time when everyone thought, are these tricks or can he really do magic? And Alistair Crowley too? Yes, you can well imagine. It was a great time. What kind of life do you remember? On my list is that I was once an Arab. I see a small group in the desert. They were kind of nomads. I was on the horse. I was male there. I had a woman there, but I sent her away to protect her. 
and I'm with this group. Maybe it was about a fate or something to fight against another tribe there. Anyway, we were all very covered up in black. You might know it from films. And yes, I just remember this small group of this Arab nomadic tribe fighting against another. Something like that. Yes, in a life like that, I also remember. I know. Yes, I was with the nomads there too, right? With the nomads, you even had to train. Sure, but I don't remember now. Yes, yes, I still remember that. I had to learn there too. For example, there were sometimes very strict requirements for meditation. So, of course, I would rather call it survival meditation. Okay, sounds exciting. That means you have to learn to let your heartbeat beat so low that people think you're dead. One of the practices of the nomads back then, a very long time ago, And many people lived in the desert, I remember that. And I was even the leader of a tribe. I also had a wife at the time, and I later had her parents sentenced to death because they violated tribal rules. And of course, my wife resented me for that. Luckily, it wasn't me. So I still remember scenes like that, but I don't remember that much from that time. So these are individual scenes that I have from this time. And a nomadic life can sometimes be a bit monotonous and just hanging out in the desert. I remember that as a teenager, I found it very fascinating and loved watching films like that. Well, at some point it won't, but now I understand why I found it fascinating back then. Yes, yes, correct. Yes, what kind of life do you have left? So I remember a life from India. Yes, me too. I think you also had a life in India. And since you know the time, that was probably my time too. Yes, I remember living in India. I must have been around 17, 18th century, and I really wanted to become a Sadhguru. Good, but I wasn't good. I remember I had a teacher who constantly made me long, constant. And the other one, you know, there were two of us. Two students, and he taught us both, our master, I would say, our teacher, and he always teased me and he always spoiled him. And he was also his favorite student, and he was great at everything. He sat down there, and what do I know? He immediately went into some great state of consciousness. And I didn't manage it that way. And I always tried hard, and I just didn't manage to be as good as my classmate. And of course, that was pretty annoying, and nowadays I understand why the teacher treated me like that. I didn't deserve any better because I still had a lot of ego problems at the time. I was envious, jealous. I wanted to be as great as my classmate and wanted to outdo my teacher. So there was a lot of self-confidence involved in my training. And of course, my teacher saw that straight away and thought that he always needed a slap on the wrist so that he could learn to pull himself together. Yes. And how was that for you? I was more of a healer, so I did a lot of Ayurveda and things like that. Rather very withdrawn, working with people and healing them and doing all these therapies. The problem is, with memories of other lives, you never really know what time that is. Not always, so sometimes yes, but not always yes. It's already difficult. Well, I've always had problems with that because if you suddenly remember another life and you're somehow walking through the forest or sitting with people and meditating or something else, you can't tell what year it is. Let alone month and day because there is no sign there. No, never. 
Yes, and you always have to estimate guests. You then have to observe the surroundings and see what kind of clothes they are wearing. Are there cars here already or are there carriages or are there just horses or are they just inventing the wheel? You just never really know. That's why I find exact times difficult to remember. You can only go by feeling somehow. And based on what you see. Yes, I was still a healer, I would say. Something 19 to 20, well, 100 or 200 years ago, I'll just say. I was Philippe then, living in Spain. Philippe. Philippe. And then I was a kind of healer, not a great healer who healed everyone. But just like that, I lived in my village, went back and forth from village to village to the neighboring villages and just used herbs, healed people, something like that, like a little healer, like a mini doctor, I would say. Exactly. Okay. By the way, that was my very first reincarnation memory. The healer Filippo from Spain, yes. Exciting, yes. With the Jesus slippers there, you didn't have that many clothes, or not that great clothes. They were very simple clothes, linen clothes and things like that. So I wasn't rich, but I think I liked life that way. What I also find very exciting is that Nikki and I remember a life from the future. Shit, yes. Right? Yes, what's funny above all is that he saw it and then I, Hypnagogue, saw it two or three times, but we didn't really know each other then. We didn't live together then, but of course we wrote it to each other and it was very identical. So really a life, yes, a bit of Star Trek, right? Yes, that was Star Trek. So Star Trek really isn't necessarily science fiction, but really shows what things will be like in the future. Something like that. So in the future life, I remember this, because from the higher perspective, all lives are at the same time. This means you can remember the past as well as the future. So we have already lived life. Yes, from a higher perspective. And of course, if you tap into your higher self, according to your knowledge, then it may well be that data from your future life can come into your present. And that was the case with us. Yes, for example, I remember the canteen similar to the canteen in Star Trek where you go in and the cadets are all sitting there with their cool overlords. I just went in there and you were there too and I've seen it several times, this cadet training academy and yes, it looks like that. Yes, I saw all that too. We often hung out in the canteen. We had a lot of fun there too. And we always met new people. For example, I met two people in the canteen that I know from my current life. That means they'll run around there again you're male and I'm female again, right? Yes, yes, right, exactly, yes. And this future life is actually our next life. But even then, excitingly, we got the same information independently of each other. That life is voluntary. And consciously. Yes, we can incarnate voluntarily. We can say yes to this life or say no, I don't feel like going through this. So, as I said, we played it through there, but we could play it through again now with the awareness that we are incarnated. So, without the complete amnesia, we could go back in and play it again if we didn't want to. Yes, if we want to. Yes, interesting that we both saw the same information, that it is voluntary and conscious, and yes, it really is full sci-fi. Yes, it's kind of funny to see that something like this will actually happen one day. Spaceships, stars, flakes, cadets who somehow try to get to some great spaceship 
where they can then work in the engine room or on the bridge. Of course, things are very popular on the bridge. So anyone who works on the bridge is, of course, more highly regarded than if you work in the canteen. Although working in the canteen isn't so bad now. You always have entertainment. You just have to cook all day. But there isn't much cooking anyway. There are replicators here. Right. There are mainly replicators there. So it's not necessarily necessary to have a cook on board. But I would say that since we're going to wake up in cryo soon anyway, in our spaceship we don't have to go through this nonsense again. No, it's not absolutely necessary, although it sounds like a fun life. Yes, it was really funny, that's true. Do you remember life in New York as a reporter? Yes, yes, oh yes. Yes, I always walked around with a trench coat like that. It was a bit Columbo-like. Me too, but that was in the 90s or whatever that was. I don't know when, or 70s, I can't tell you that. I don't know either. It doesn't seem like a past life either. Not really, like a parallel life? Yes, more like a parallel life that also exists. The higher self is quite effective in its way of thinking and thinks, yes, it would be good to remove several egos, not only in different eras, but also in different... countries in the present, in this century. So it can certainly be the case that we put Nikki there, a reporter who doesn't want to have anything to do with spirituality. We put a Chinese cook who doesn't want to have anything to do with reporting, with journalism, and not with spirituality either. So in order for the higher self to form such a picture, it has to send out egos or parts of itself that cover different subject areas. Nikki does spirituality and the Chinese do Chinese restaurants, cuisine and so on. And life with other people, service, and, 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 and the other part of Nikki's listener in the self is just acting like a reporter. Yes, and these are also called complementary aspects, which the listener uses himself to cover different perspectives and subject areas in order to be able to extract the appropriate experiences and empirical values. But to us, it just seems like another or past incarnation from our perspective. And in this incarnation, we are reporters in New York. I would say it's the 80s, 90s, also because I also have a trench coat. I think that was the fashion back then. I always see us both in trench coats. We were both reporters in some way, like Louis and Clark, just a little bit. Louis and Clark? From Superman. Oh, both of them, yes. Yeah, right. And also an interesting topic about, yes, what is that actually? This is actually another form of incarnation. Yes, actually, we didn't even look at them. We don't have that. It just came to us spontaneously. So you could look at this as a complementary incarnation. Yes, I would say so. So that you expose opposite aspects on Earth that take place in the same time, but think about different subject areas. If I look back further in time, in quotation marks, do I still have a life in the Middle Ages, something like that? Yes, at the castle. You know what? Just it. I forgot to write it down. And yes, the interesting thing is that even in the present day, we still come across people who we know, oh, we know them from the Middle Ages. Here, this is Ritter anyway, and this is Ritter anyway. So it's very funny. Just recently we met someone here, Tom. And yes, we always call him the storyteller because he can tell fascinating stories all in English, but really exciting ones. It's always easy to listen to because he tells stories very well and doesn't tell boring or redundant stuff. 
And he also says that he remembers the Middle Ages, that he was a knight there, most likely from England, that he also has some memories from that time and even thinks that he knows us from that time. You were a half knight. A half knight. You were... Yeah, I was probably some kind of bastard, you know? Such a mix of royal and peasant. You become a half knight if the woman is not of noble blood, right? Wasn't that different? Well, just, that's what they used to call a bastard. He wasn't pure-blooded. That means there's some knight with a farmer's wife, bling, and... That's it. Then a child was born, and then you married the damsel, probably me, and then you had to become a hybrid because you were the bastard. That's how it was, right? Something like that might have been possible, but I don't know that now. That's just a guess. So I wasn't so interested in life that I did a lot of research into it. In general, I have to say I have done little research into reincarnation. Yes, me too. Yes, actually not much, even if that sounds like a lot to you now. But these are all minor things that suddenly came to attention in our research. They just popped up. They just popped up. However, castles have always fascinated us. You have to say that even though we haven't done much research into it. Visited every medieval market in Germany, stories like this. Yes, yeah, something like that, actually. Why we didn't research it further, but yes. Yes, we could go on for hours about what memories we have there, or did you want another one? Nope, nope, nope. So there are still a lot of them, but I think the video is long enough anyway. Yes, so you got a little insight into our past lives. A few, I think, I don't know, somewhere between 20 and 25 lives I remember. But only in sequence. That doesn't mean the entire range of what has happened in your life from A to Z. But that's not so important. It's just about the essence. Yes, exactly. We just got insights into our past lives, and these insights are very essential. Check, 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 check. Oh, well, that was me in life. That's what I did. Yeah, okay, understood. Next life, please. Yes, now you're probably wondering, wow, those were interesting stories. Why don't I remember this? I want to be able to remember too, and now we'll give you a few tips. Exactly. If you've always been fascinated by castles like we are, then go into that feeling. What do you feel when you see a castle? and then go into yourself a little. Maybe pictures from past lives will just pop up. And then don't dismiss it. Oh, I'm imagining it. There is no such thing as imagination anyway. Then see what fascinates you or what totally puts you off. What do you not like at all? And then go into that feeling when, for example, you don't like a country at all. You'll say that you think Thailand. It's really stupid. That could be true. You never want to go to Thailand. Then you can assume that you had a life in Thailand and that somehow it wasn't all that rosy. Yes, that is possible. As soon as you think about any country, I never want to go there. And you notice an emotion coming up just thinking about the country. Then it says that you apparently had a negative experience in this country in another life. Or, for example, you really want to go to Egypt and are totally fascinated by the clothes, the pyramids, the camels, the desert, and so on and so forth. Then it is very likely that you once had a very pleasant life in Egypt. So this is how you can check yourself. What interests you? Maybe you're interested in Ireland and you love Ireland more than anything and you definitely want to go to Ireland and have a vacation there at some point when... You have a little money left over. Then you can assume, aha, you most likely had a life in Ireland. And so on and so on. So what you said that it was a bit lost, i.e. intense emotions. If they are there, I think, yes, you should make sure that it is really intense, the emotion involved. Yes, definitely, yes. Also the clothes.
What kind of clothes do you like? Which clothes do you prefer? There could also be a hint in there where you once had a different life. So that's our tip for beginners. Also applies to hobbies? Yes. If you like painting and are a passionate musician, you can bet that this isn't the first time you've done this. Talents? Yes, talent too. This means that if you were a well-known pianist in your previous life, you will be able to learn piano much, much faster in this life. Or? Yes. And this is how talents are defined. Talent means you've done this before in another life. That's talent, the definition of talent, because it's not the case that one person is born and can do something better than the other. That's not how it is. We are all born with the same characteristics, with the same abilities. And then, of course, it depends on what you do in your life and in your other lives, too. And if someone says to themselves, yes, I will be a successful pianist in this life, then in the next life you will at least be interested in learning the piano, most likely. And you will learn it faster than many, many others. So, dear ones, I think that was one of our longest videos, I would say. I hope you had fun and write in the comments what you've experienced in your life, what you remember, what you particularly enjoyed, that sort. Of thing. Yes, we would be interested. Maybe you also remember one or two lives and we would of course be happy to hear a few anecdotes. We also hope that we have now been able to take you a level higher from the perspective of classical reincarnation a little higher. To reach level two and see what types of incarnations are there, what do they look like, how can you imagine it, and so on. Anyway, thanks for watching and lots of love.